days ago at the end. And on Ash Wednesday, we were reminded when we put ashes upon our forehead and the words were said, dust you are and dust you shall return. Those 40 days are coming to a close now as we come closer and closer. And today is Holy Thursday or the day of the living Lord's, our Lord's Supper was given. And tonight we reenact that with the men of the congregation. And uh, tomorrow is Good Friday. And on Good Friday, we, we have a tenebrae service here at 7 o'clock. It's a, uh, a service of darkness. And it's a, one of my special favorites, I guess, because it was my sins too that nailed Jesus to the cross. And we have a big wooden cross that will be right about here. And so at one part of the service, you get to come up and nail your sins to the cross because we begin giving you a piece of paper and you get to write your sins on it and uh, the nail to the cross. And uh, so it's, uh, it's an exciting time and, and a good time. And our Easter continues, so on Easter Sunday, we gather for the resurrection. And this whole altar area is going to look totally different. We bring in an open tomb, and we build a garden here, and we have about 100 plants outside right now that are going to be brought in Saturday morning, and this place will be turned into just amazing uh, what, what happens. And so Easter morning, we encourage you to come back at 7 o'clock at sunrise service, followed by an Easter breakfast. Followed by Easter egg hunt, and then 10 30, we have another service, and we hope that you'll be a part of that. Today, is, uh, tonight, though, it's called Monday, Thursday. It's from the Latin mandatum, where we get the word mandate or command. And the disciple, uh, Jesus gives his disciples a command on this night. He says, You are to love one another, and there's no wiggle room there. And the service is about that love that Jesus has for you and me, and so I welcome. So let us stand for our opening hymn, I come, O Savior, to your table. Son of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in Christ, 
As we gather on this Thursday of Holy Week, let us humbly draw near to the Lord to remember what he has done and to receive what he gives to us by his word and sacrament. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. With humble hearts, let us pray to our Father. We confess that we have sinned against you. Some of our sins we know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which we are ashamed. But some of our transgressions are known only to you. Surely we were sinful from birth. In the name of Jesus, we ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore us that we may rest securely in you. By the mercy of God, we are redeemed by Jesus Christ, and in him we are forgiven. He's the very Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, your sins, my sins, the whole world's sins. And receive this forgiveness through the word we hear and the sacrament we share. And as your pastor and servant of the Lord, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now with the prayer of the church, and tonight this tradition so in. Let us pray to the Lord, and the response will be, Lord, have mercy. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the world, for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this congregation, its mission and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who partake this day of Christ's body and blood, and in their eating and drinking, they receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of us gathered here in worship, that the blessings of the service be shown forth in our lives as we live in peaceful service to one another and in the world. Let us pray for the Lord. Grant us your peace. Amen. Our confession of faith tonight will be sung as we listen to the words if we truly believe. You may be seated for this.
Yes, we truly believe and let us stand now. As we pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. The body of Christ broken for you. After the same manner also took the cup after supper. And when he gave thanks and broken, I gave it to him and said, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Christ shed for you. May this body and this blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith of a life everlasting. Amen. And we pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have poured out upon us your never ending love by giving your Son Jesus Christ to death for us. Nourish your church through the sacrament of his body and blood. Strengthen us so that we may continue to proclaim him who gives life to the world. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we prepare for the Living Lord's Supper. Uh, as the song, Al Shaddai, is being sung, if you brought an offering today, the offering plates are uh, before us. And uh, I just want to thank uh, men. This year, we have uh, men from St. Andrews helping us out with the Living Lord's Supper. So it's a combination of two churches putting it up together this year. And we are blessed. We sing El Shaddai.
Leonardo da Vinci completed his interpretation of the Last Supper of our Lord. Despite its historical inaccuracy, the qualities of his stylized painting draw us into the room with the disciples and Jesus at the center. We soon realize that the twelve, as they are often called, were, after all, individuals, ordinary people who came into contact with one extraordinary man. This night centers around an extraordinary meal, a Passover meal of tradition that eventually sets in motion a drama that changes the course of these 13 lives and indeed the lives of all humanity to come as God unfolds his plan for redemption. Thank you. 
Jesus' salvation. The last to arrive is Judas. He has already made a deal to hand over Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He is one of the most controversially complex and interesting characters in the New Testament. Yet, Jesus chose him and he accepted the call. It is tragic that Judas's most active role in the gospel comes on this night of the Last Supper. It is the role of betrayer, of the one who steals into the dark of night to do his sinister deed, and subsequently the role of a misguided penitent who robs himself of the gift that the Savior came to give him, his life. What are they thinking as they gather for the meal and the events of the evening unfold? Peter, I am sure, has many thoughts this night. Let's listen. I get so angry with James and John sometimes. What did they think they were doing? trying to get the Lord to give them the first in places in the new kingdom. It's not their decision or their brothers. It's his. Perhaps the honor will be mine. And if I'm not first, well, it's his decision, not mine. Maybe that's what he's been thinking about. He seems to be so preoccupied as though something of unusual significance is about to take place. Here we are gathered for the most important meal of the year. And there's all this trouble boiling just beneath the surface. Everyone seems to be thinking, what's in this new kingdom for me? I must do better. Jesus does not give up on them. He is very patient and asks the Heavenly Father for help. He just cannot understand how they can be thinking such heady things when the whole world is at stake. He knows they cannot see things the way he can. And Jesus tries again to show them what the Father has sent him to do. He says to the Father, guide me. Judas looks uncomfortable. I wonder what was going through his mind. I shouldn't come tonight. It's time to give up my masquerade. I don't belong to these people. That stupid argument about the new kingdom. Don't they realize that we must force Jesus' hand if we are ever going to bring that kingdom to reality? We should have done it on Sunday. That's when the crowd was with us. But after this week, he's ruined it. All those confrontations with the rulers, they'll never follow him now. Peter suddenly realizes there is no servant present to wash their feet. How could they have forgotten such an important realizes 
Do you not know? Do you know what I've done? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right. But if I, your teacher and Lord, can take this task upon my own hands, can you not see that there is no duty too holy for the people whom God has chosen? If I have washed your feet, then you should wash one another's feet. I have given you this example to show you that my kingdom is not a kingdom marked by power and coercion, but of voluntary service and love.
artist took his brush and painted out the cup saying, I want people to look at Christ. He is what's important to you. Jesus is what is important.
So which disciple are you? Because we, one, we were portrayed in some or even in all of them, weren't we? And that's what we have to understand. And how blessed we are to know that our Lord and Savior loves us and forgives us. Following the service tonight, we could use some help as we get the service set for tomorrow night. So if you have some strong arms and bodies and backs, I would welcome you to stay and, and help us to get set up. And then tomorrow night's service is at 7 o'clock. And again, it's a, we come and nail our sins to the cross. And we hope that you will be a part of it. Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs> Peace now and serve the Lord. And we saw.